Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore video game content that goes unused, altered, and unseen. As I'm releasing this video, the 2021 Tokyo Olympics are in full swing, with each nation sending their best to do their best on the world stage. So in this video, we'll be taking a trip through the years and check out some unused content in what was, at least back in 2007, one of the most anticipated video game crossovers of all time. Two of my favorite video game franchises, both Mario and Sonic, finally competing in the same game after years of stiff competition. Now these games individually don't have all too much content for their own video, so instead I'll be going over some highlights from most of the games. And also, here I'll be keeping this video exclusive to the Summer Games iterations in the series, but if you're interested in a video on the Winter Games as well, be sure to let me and the YouTube algorithm know with a like or comment below, and maybe we'll check it out when the Winter Games roll around next. But anyways, with all of that said, it's time to go for gold and find some lost bits. Alright, so first let's take a trip back to the far off age of antiquity, 2008. Which, scarily enough, is I'm sure before many of you were even born. Anyways, the 2008 Beijing Games game was released on both the Nintendo DS as well as Wii. And first, let's start off with the DS release. Here we have several models that go completely unused. The first of these is a model of King Boo, a character that is never seen in the game at all, but I guess since this model is left in the game, there must have been at least some sort of plans to include him, be it a playable character or even just more of a background role. Then next are two models that go unused since the decision was made to use pre-rendered 2D sprites instead. This is the case for both the green and yellow variants of the Egg Pond Badniks from the Sonic series. While the red Eggpond model is seen in the Conveyor Belt minigame, and a grey variant is seen as the big boss in the Dream Shooting event, the green and yellow Eggponds are only seen here as 2D sprites. It's likely that these 3D models were scrapped in favour of the 2D sprites here to make the game less computationally taxing on the DS. Oh yeah, there's also an unused model titled Axis, which is quite literally a 3D model of the X, Y, and Z axis. Yeah, go figure. Then the only other notable thing found so far in the DS version is this unused bit of text titled Test Camera. Like the file name suggests, this text deals with what appears to be coordinates and other data points relating to testing the game's camera. Notably, here with the Z-axis rotation values, we can see that the camera was going to rotate 360 degrees in 90 degree increments. Now moving along to the Wii release of the 2008 Beijing games, first we got several audio files that go unused. Starting things off is this one, in which its intro sort of has an outer space vibe to it. Then there's this one, which is thought to perhaps have been meant for a water-based sport. And finally is this fast-paced track. That one really gets the heart pumping. Next are two unused tracks for completing an event in both second and third place. In the final release, regardless if you place it in first, second, or third, the same first place victory theme will play. Now both of these tracks are like 5 minutes long, which seems like a ludicrous length for a victory screen where I'm sure most players didn't spend more than like 15 seconds on. Anyways, here's a quick snippet of the one meant for second place. And now here's a sample of the unused third place victory theme. Mm, 
Next is an unused track thought to have been meant to be used in the Voice Memory minigame, as a similar sounding track was used in the DS version's Replay minigame, which itself is also very similar to the Voice Memory game. Yep. Yeah. Then the last unused track in this game is one meant for the Dream Canoeing event. The Dream Canoeing event only ended up being seen in the DS release, but the existence of this song here suggests that it may have also been planned to appear in the Wii release as well. In any case, here's a quick sample. Next, probably the most notable part of this game is that there is actually leftover data for several characters suggesting that they were perhaps once planned to actually be playable in the game. And you know me, we like to do a little hacking here, so with the use of some codes, these characters can actually still be made playable. These otherwise unplayable characters include Birdo, Rouge, Big the Cat, Espio, a Goomba, Jet, Silver, Cream, Donkey Kong, Charmy B, Kiki the Monkey Badnik, and even these fellas. Now, as you can see, obviously some of these characters have more complete programming than others, like here Silver and Jet will actually take to the starting blocks, and Charmy actually holds the fencing sword sort of properly, while others like Big and the Bullet will just strike a T-pose, or will lack a walking animation and will just slide around. That said, it was quite amusing to see Big pull off some crazy trampoline tricks all while in his T-pose. No wonder Froggy kept trying to run away from this absolute unit. Unfortunately, however, some games just won't work with these characters modded in, such as the 100 meter dash, since the player character is unable to ever start the race, or in Badminton where the unused player models will just load into the middle of the table. Yes, Big really is big enough to completely encapsulate Charmy. Now, despite some of these games essentially softlocking, it's still cool to see the normally unplayable characters kinda working in the other games. Also, as a side note, with these cheat codes, I was able to get multiples of the same character in a single game, finally fulfilling my fantasy of seeing 16 Waluigi's competing in a swimming race. Anyways, now some of these normally unplayable characters are seen as NPCs in this game, like Cream, some would go on to be playable in future installments in the series, such as Rouge and Donkey Kong, and some of these characters I'm not entirely convinced were planned on being playable, like Kiki or Bullet Bill. I don't know, it just doesn't really make sense to me. In any case though, it's strange to see that some of these characters are more or less ready to go, so it really begs the question as to why they were scrapped too many characters, some of these might have been deemed too obscure, it's hard to say for sure, but regardless, an odd decision to scrap them as playable, all things considered. Now moving four years up, we got the London 2012 Olympic Games for the Wii. First off, not really anything unused, but as a small little factoid, the internal name for Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games is simply just William. Now, there's no 100% confirmation for this or anything, but it's believed that, with these Olympic Games being hosted in England, the internal name William was actually dedicated to Prince William, or William Arthur Philip Louis Mountbatten Windsor. Say that five times fast. Anyways, first up we got this rough around the edges, unused model of Mario that, based on his low poly nature, is believed to have been used for testing purposes. There's also three leftover animations associated with this model, one idle animation, one meant for rolling but it doesn't really seem to work properly and it just has Mario curled up into a ball, and finally is this animation which appears to be a test for Mario hanging and swinging from the uneven bars gymnastics event. Then found in a folder named test is also this model of a horse as seen in the equestrian events. I'm uncertain if this is a different horse than the one that is used, but based on it being found in a test folder, I'd wager so. Next up is this texture titled Action Park Test, and it's a screenshot of an aerial view of the London Party mode. This image is found in a folder titled Screenshot, which contains all of the graphics used as the background before starting an event, so it's likely this is an alternate version of the image that's used before starting up a round of London Party. However, it's clear that this one is much darker, probably taking place at nighttime. 
Also in the test texture, we can see a few things that aren't seen in the final one, such as pipes, as well as a few characters like Bowser, Mario, and Toad. Then next is this texture titled Lig Map Underscore Test, and I believe this is short for Light Map, and this texture was obviously used for testing. Then for more unused models, we have this unused start gate, complete with an opening animation, and then there are also five unused map models titled A Underscore Test. The first four are all models of a stadium, and they all appear to be the same, or at least I couldn't really find any notable differences between them. There's also A5 underscore test here, but this one just appears empty. Now it's thought that the first four are likely early versions of the stadiums, and they also appear to have everything loaded together in one model, rather than being made up of several different parts like the stadium that is used. In these test models, we can also see this placeholder texture on this screen here, featuring the duo lead characters in a race. Then moving along, we got some leftover graphics in the game from the 2012 Winter Games prequel, including a sign for the Whistler Boutique, some UI graphics, as well as the different tiers of shopping carts. London 2012 also has a bunch of unused scripts and text remnants from the game's source code, but one in particular that stands out to me is a script as well as other references to a character viewer. Now these don't seem to work in any sort of capacity in the game itself, but as a small aside here, while digging into some of the models in this game, I essentially found a way to make a character viewer of my own. I also had the misfortune of discovering that I was able to load animation data for all of the different characters on any one given character, which I also learned are all split into two models, one for the body and one for the head. Anyways, this led me down a rabbit hole of some pretty disturbing mutations of some of the models. Seriously, what the f- Yeah, some of this stuff was genuinely unnerving with the weird fingers and elongated limbs. And now, moving on to the Wii U era, next we got the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. This game thankfully has a pretty slick little debug menu that I was able to access. Unlike in the previous game, here we actually can access a character viewer, and this one is quite interesting. Similar to what we saw in the Mario Party 2 and 3 videos, here you can select basically any of the game's characters, and cycle through all of their animations in any given event in the game. Thankfully, no abominations here. And on top of viewing all of the animations, you can also toy around with how a character's head moves. You can, like, move this little ball and see how the character reacts to it. You can also toggle between their whole head moving to track the ball, or just their eyes too. Additionally, you can easily swap between any of the different maps for each of the Olympic events. This character viewer also lets us detach the camera from the characters to freely roam around and explore all of the different areas. By doing so, I was able to find several currently undocumented placeholder images around the different locales, namely dummy boards 2, 5, or maybe that's a 6, and 7. Oh yeah, and for all the Rosalina fans in the audience, don't worry, I got you. Overall, this mode was honestly one of the best debug viewers I think I've ever come across so far when making this series. Super fun to just check out all the different characters, their animations, and it's especially cool to fly around in the different locales. This really made me appreciate just how amazing this game looks. Then back to the root debug menu, next is Debug Ceremony, and as the name implies, this lets the player test the victory ceremony scene for all of the events in the game. Additionally, you can also select which characters are to be present in the ceremony, so yes, Wario does get first, second, and third place. The next option in the debug menu, Talk Window Viewer, is a text viewer in which you can browse, I'm sure, every single text box seen in the game, like all 3,000 of them. Then next is Sports, and this lets you quickly load into any of the different events in the game, handy for getting a game set up super fast. And lastly for this menu is Rio City, and this one unfortunately basically just takes you back to the title screen, nothing too crazy. Overall, a pretty sweet little debug menu. Obviously, the character viewer was a highlight, but still lots to play around with. And last up for this video, we're heading to the 2021 Olympics. Or are they still 2020? I don't know. Anyways, currently there's not all too much to talk about this game so far, so I might have to revisit it someday. But most notably, there's a scrapped segment seen in pre-release footage in which Cream and Cheese were once to appear in the game's story mode, as well as a few unused voice clips of the female announcer. 
these clips include her calling out several characters from the game, and it's thought that these were meant to be used during the award ceremonies, similar to how they were seen in previous games. Anyways, here's a sample of a few of them. The gold medal goes to Olympic champion, Mario, Sonic, Knuckles, Rosalina, Peach. But the most interesting part of this is that there's actually a voice clip for a character that isn't normally playable. This character is Xena from the Deadly Six from the Sonic series. Xena. Now, there's not much else in the game to really shed more light on if Xena was to be a full-on main roster character or if she was just going to take on a guest character role, but seeing as how Zavok and Zaz are both guest characters, I'd be willing to bet that she was also once intended to join them. Honestly, the most surprising part is that Sega is still trying to push these characters at all. Anyways, that's about it for now. Again, let me know if you'd like to see a video on the Winter Olympics in the future. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and check out some more of my Lost Bits while you're here. But as always, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.